So, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Thursday. Good evening. Uh, <laughs> we'll first just have a short prayer as we gather our thoughts and ask God's blessing on this time together. Heavenly Father, thank you for the calm and the stillness of this evening. A time of quietness and contemplation. A time when we can rest in our nearness to you and feel the balm of your peace and your holiness as they spread over us and fill us up to the depths of our whole being. And in drawing near to you, we thank you that through your spirit, we are drawn closer to each other in fellowship and in love. So we offer this time to you now, asking that you will speak to us, asking that you will hear our prayers, asking that you will answer our prayers. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 <clears throat> As I was driving around on um, up, uh, Christmas Eve, seems as if I've done a lot of driving around recently, but on Christmas Eve, I was driving back in the dark and looking at all the lights that uh, are decorating the houses, and there seems to be more and more each year. And as I was driving and looking at the lights, I was thinking about Christmas Day and how it was going to go. In our house, Christmas is a very familiar time in that the decorations are the same year after year. I even am so um, obsessive about this. I take photographs of them from one year to the next so that I can check the year after that they look just the same as they did the year before. No. The photographs show me that the, decora the decorations are the same. They're in exactly the same spot. The menus, nothing varied there either. Nobody still eats with all the Christmas pudding. Tom and I are still finishing that up because I always make more than we need. The events, the sort of things that we do, the places that we go from year to year, not a great deal changes. But you know what? That to me is a large part what Christmas is all about. And it is to be celebrated. Because indeed in the whole world, Christmas comes round with the same unchanging regularity. Even television schedules reflect the time of year in a way that few other religious festivals can manage to do. But Christmas is right in there. All the idents between the programmes, the programmes themselves have got a Christmas theme or they've got decorations, is there. A couple of days later, I was watching uh, Bob Mortimer and Paul Whitehouse in their Christmas special. It's a programme called Gone Fishing. If you haven't seen it, I would recommend it. The scenery is absolutely stunning. The photography is wonderful. Uh, the two comedians, they don't sit together and crack jokes. They often just share their thoughts with each other about all sorts of subjects. So if you haven't seen it, then have a look. The one, the Christmas special was in Norway. And once again, we got fabulous scenery, lovely photography, and they also managed to catch some spectacular fish. As usual, the two men chattered about a whole range of topics, and, and including Christmas. And on this occasion, Paul Whitehouse was saying that he thought <coughs> Chris, excuse me, <clears throat> he thought that Christmas had lost its meaning in and amongst all the trappings that come with it. Excess food, excess alcohol, 
budget succeeded endless partying and he came up with a solution his idea was that christmas should just come round every four years like the world <laughs> and he said that he thought that that might help people to appreciate it more when it comes round well <clears throat> You can discuss that idea till the cows come home, whether you agree with it, whether you don't, whatever. But for me, it's the very fact that Christmas comes every year that matters. That every year it's the same, the same familiarity, the same message. You can't take Jesus out of Christmas. Because if you do, it's just not Christmas. Jesus is at the heart of it. Jesus was born into the world to bring God's love to all people. And it's that gift that keeps on being offered every year. Every year that message is going out to people and every year there will be people for the first time in their lives say I want a part of this. I want Jesus. I want that gift. I accept that gift for myself. God keeps on offering that gift, that message to all people. He wants to forgive us. It's a gift that goes on being offered because God loves us. And it's a gift that keeps on being offered because God still wants to give us new life, new hope through Jesus. So when I was driving back and thinking, yeah, it's just the same again, again and again. It's because Jesus is giving us, God gives us all these opportunities. He gives it again. If you didn't hear it last year, then maybe listen this time. It's there for you. It's there all the time. It's there for the taking. It says in, Mal in Micah, in chapter 7, Who is a God like you? pardoning iniquity and passing over the transgression of the remnant of your possession. He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in showing clemency. He will again, again have compassion upon us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot. You will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. The thing is, it can be Christmas every day because that gift isn't just offered at Christmas time. That's when it's there in the media, it's there on the television screens, it's there for the world to see, but it's there every day. So we're going to come now to a short time of prayer tonight. Um, before I begin, is there anyone who has got any specific prayer requests that um, I or others am unaware of? God of God, light of light, we give thanks for the wondrous gift that you've given to us once again this Christmas. We thank you for the miracle of this tiny baby at the heart of Christmas, who grew up to change lives forever, who made it possible for us to be called children of God. We pray that those people who heard the good news for the first time this Christmas will grow in their faith, 
and rejoice in you. For those of us who are hearing the story for the umpteenth time, help us to be refreshed as we're reminded about what it means for all of us. And help all of us to be diligent in taking your message to the many who still are yet to hear it. We give thanks for Dewsbury Cares, for all the other charities, not just in Dewsbury, but across the country, who worked hard on Christmas Day to give love and joy to so many people. We thank you especially for Michelle and her team and pray that through that event and other similar events, people will have been touched by your Holy Spirit, that lives may have been turned round so that a fresh start can be made in 2023. We give thanks for happy times we've all been able to spend with families and friends. But we remember those who've not had similar experiences. We think of those who've been bereaved. On the one hand, Christmas is a time of such great joy, but for them, those who are grieving, a time of deep sadness. We think of those who are sick at home or in hospital. We give thanks for the work of all the doctors and nurses, the emergency workers. And just now I pray for whatever it was that happened outside our house last night. I pray that those people who were involved today will find peace, healing. I give thanks for the air ambulance, for all those who help to keep it in the air. I give thanks for the dedication of police and doctors and nurses. I pray for the staff at the pub and all the other people who are there at the time and pray that they will find some consolation today. Pray to, for those people who've been lonely this Christmas, people sitting behind closed doors who perhaps, whose stories have perhaps not reached the outside, people who've gone by unnoticed. We pray for those who've been left fearful. Christmas is a time of great joy, but for some people, the stress of a difficult relationship seems to be emphasized and things happen which shouldn't. So people are afraid. We give thanks for refuges which are there for women and men and children to go to, to find sanctuary. We pray for those who have not yet sought help in those relationships and pray that they will have the courage to do so before it's too late. We pray for the many people across the country who this year more than any other are feeling the stress and the strain of financial difficulties. Whatever the ending is for it, however soon or late it can be before things get better, I pray for those families who are really struggling, that they will be able to find the support that they need, just keep them ticking over until things improve. I pray for those in positions of financial power, 
that they will be compassionate and will seek to find ways to make things better for all people and not just their own pockets. We pray for those people who are known to us and where the church can help. Father God, show us the way. In our hearts, we name any others known to us who are struggling. Father God, we cannot ignore the needs of this world, a world which seems to be groaning under a weight of care, where there is political strife across the globe, financial difficulty in every corner of the world, where the climate is doing things that are unexpected, unknown, causing life to be difficult for so many people. So we remember the people in America. And then there are other areas of the world where warfare continues and it seems so senseless. There is hunger and oppression. And tonight I want to pray especially for the women of Afghanistan. In a country where I'm free to work, to live, to wear the clothes I want, it's hard to imagine what those women are having to go through. Women of all ages. I pray, Father God, that strong men filled with compassion Strong men who understand what it means to treat someone with kindness and respect. Strong men who know what is right, who know what is wrong. I pray that strong men will rise up with courage to effect change for those women, for those little girls, for the future of Afghanistan. Finally, Father God, we pray for our own needs. For each one of us, there are so many things that have happened over the last few days for which we can rejoice. For each one of us, there are other things which happen which cause us sadness, anxiety, Father God, when the smallest sparrow falls, you notice. How much more will you notice our needs? In the quiet, in the stillness, in the calm of this evening, these prayers we offer to you in the name of Jesus. God incarnate, God of gods, light of light. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you all.